Welcome everyone to the new Fly Fisher. We've all dreamed about a special fishing destination where the fish are huge and plentiful and the scenery breathtaking. In today's program, we're traveling to Labrador to visit two lodges to fly fish for both massive brook trout and ferocious northern pike. It's gonna be a great show, stay with us. There's something truly magical about flying into a remote location like Awesome Lake, which is located in the Mealy Mountains of Labrador. Everywhere around you, nature abounds from black bears to gentle Canada jays. The environment is soothing and restful, something you could never get at home. Best of all, this is where some of the best fly fishing in the world exists. In the first part of today's program, we're visiting Awesome Lake Lodge this beautiful lake is fed by cold water from the snow melting in the Mealy Mountains. Within this cool lake, there abounds brook trout of up to eight or nine pounds in size. On average, anglers can catch a 16-inch fish with ease. The only problem may be that these smaller fish tend to be attacked by the larger trout before you can even get them in the boat. Len Rich discovered this lake years ago and started Awesome Lake Lodge. He spoke to me about the history of this lake and a little bit about the experience of fishing here. In 1985, I was working with tourism. Uh, my job was hunting and fishing development officer for the province of Newfoundland and Labrador. My responsibility was uh, quality control, inspecting the various camps, talking to people, doing some marketing, that, that sort of thing. While I was traveling down here, on the advice of a colleague of mine, uh, we came in here, my pilot and I, to catch a few brook trout. We were on our way to the coast. and. Uh, we had to stop for lunch somewhere, so we, we sat down in here. And that's how the, uh, the lake was found. It was unnamed. We knew it was English River and there was a pond here, but basically that was all. Uh, first couple of fish I caught uh, in here I broke off. I had a, it was a, a mouse I had on, and it was a, uh, a peak year for the lemons that year. So uh, finally landed one. Got into some pretty heavy tippet and a big mouse and uh, caught a fish that was about five and a half pounds, so I saved that one. Caught another one, broke off another one, and finally landed one that we weighed two hours later when it was cleaned. It was still six and three quarter pounds in, so we figure it was about eight pounds. And that fish, uh, when my pilot saw it, he said, wow, he said, that's awesome. He said, as a matter of fact, this whole place is awesome. So, so that's how we started Awesome Lake. We, we actually uh, named the lake then, but didn't build the lodge here until 1990. And in 1990, uh, I was touring with a friend of mine, Ken Schultz, who's a, a writer, well-known writer for Field and Stream. And uh, on Ken's advice, I decided to develop a lodge here. It meant I had to leave my job with tourism, but uh, I thought this was an important thing to do. And that's how the lodge got started, and uh, right now we take eight people a week. It's uh, very remote, very exclusively all brook trout in this system. That's all we have, so there's no, no other species of fish like, uh, like northern pike or lake trout or anything else, which is kind of unique because whatever you catch here is going to be a brookie. Just don't know whether it's going to be eight inches or eight pounds. And there are eight pounders in here. Our policy here at Awesome Lake is the total catch and release. We feel that we can manage the resource much better that way. We do allow a few, uh, a few small fish for shore lunches, fish that are under a pound, probably a pound and a half. And that seems to be enjoyed by the guests. As far as the large fish go, we figure fish from three and a half to five and a half pounds are our prime breeding stock. So we enforce the barbless hook policy here. And we've never seen a dead fish. We've never seen a fish that was injured by a barbless hook. Of course, the barbed hooks really give it a give it a hard time, difficult to release, and it's stressful on the fish. So what we do as well, we use a, use just a plain cotton glove as a as a release glove. 
uh, able to grab the fish and grab it by the tail and keep it in the water. Might take the fish out for a few photographs, but basically keep it out for just a few seconds and we, we make sure the fish is resuscitated before we release it. And we've been doing that for 12 years now. Never had a problem. And our guests seem to appreciate the, the catch and release aspect of it. They know they're going to catch fish and what we catch this week, we might catch again next week or the week after and perhaps next year. I think a lot of these, be oh my God, what a size of a fish. Oh my God, he came out of nowhere. The big V. Oh, they're here. These fish are predatory. And they like anything that looks big and ugly and, and might be good to eat. And what I'm tossing out is big Dahlberg divers. It's just that. It's big. It's green. Looks a little bit maybe like a wounded minnow. And that's what it takes. That fish was huge. It just rolled for that fly. Oh, got to try again. It hurt. <laughs> it's funny, after all these years, you still get excited. Watching the rise like that. Well, this is a little larger fish. Oh, much larger. Oh, big guy's got the little guy. Hang on. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Can't hold him. Can't hold him. Big guy got the little guy. Stole him off my hook. <laughs> There's another cannibal. What we're using for streamer fishing tonight, one of my favorite flies, it's a uh, butt monkey. This is basically, yeah, I know, it's funny, but the butt monkey is uh, a pattern done by Bob Linsman and uh, Scott Smith, and it's basically to represent a sculpin. Sculpins don't necessarily have to be in a system, but I think, you know, for the big trout to be interested in them, I think what's important, there we go, is that this pattern has got the right silhouette to represent a lot of different types of bait fish, whether it's smaller brook trout in here. I think you've got suckers and uh, white fish and some other things. And it's got a lot to do with the action you impart. And what I'm doing here is a jerk strip. But see, look at that, right there at the boat. The jerk strip makes the, the fly flutter. Oh, look, he's just whacking it right here. It's just a little guy. Um, but the jerk strip makes the fly flutter and look like it's wounded underwater. There's something wrong with it. It just can't get away. Now, I'm using a full sink line. This is number six line. And it's taking it down very quick. And additionally, I put a couple split shots just ahead of the fly. And what it does is it gets it down deep fast. And then when it pauses, it does that little flutter and fall, which seems to really excite the fish. I just pounded this, just as I brought it to the edge of the turn. What a beautiful fish. You ready for him? Ready for him? Yeah. He's moves right up. Okay. He's in. Well done. Yeah. No, he's not as big as that. You know what it is? It's turned, I think. Yeah. Really would, makes it would you like to take him off? You want me no, to do it? Go ahead there, uh, Marla. Just pop it out and uh, release him. It's nice of him to turn around. That's a nice fish, Colin. Beautiful. Just beautiful. 
Good job. On Awesome Lake, you can catch large brook trout on even flies as small as size 22. On one evening, I went out with several guests from the lodge and we sight casted to rising brookies using a number of different emergers and dry flies. The action was hot and the scenery was outstanding. Oh my gosh, that's a nice fish. The jailbird? Okay. Well, it actually started when, at a time when I was married, uh, my husband and I had gone to Colorado and we were fishing for big um, cutthroat trout. And we, we could tell that they were hitting these um, nymphs. But everybody was fishing these San Juan worm patterns. And I had never seen that before. Oh, this is a nice fish, you know that? And um, I, I would love for somebody to net this for me. Um, and anyway, so we came up with this pattern on a scud hook about a size 16 that had a white foam head to imitate the, either the gas escaping from the casing or wing escaping. And, um, ooh, mink. We had a mink skull from a tag sail, and we were pulling out the real fine hairs and making a dubbing out of it. And uh, it's a nice fish. So what we did was we uh, made this, and we call it the Blair's Emerger. So then we come back, and we're fishing our home waters in Massachusetts. And we decided that we wanted to come up with a pattern for the blue-winged olive when it was in the nymph stage. So I said, well, let's, let's put blue-winged olive dubbing and give it a rib to change the look of it and to do the white foam head. So we did that, but we hadn't come up with a name for it. So we go over to the river, and we're fishing it. And I hook into a fish, and I had to call out to my husband to tell him what I was using. And all I can think of was something having to do with the stripes. And on convict uniforms, they had stripes on their uniforms, and they used to be called jailbirds in the olden days. So that's why I call it a jailbird. And I thought, nobody will know what it is when I call it out, so it'll be our secret. And it's always been that. And, and it's been a pretty successful fly for uh, quite a while now, on every river that I go to. Yeah, it's a blueing doll of nymph, but I'm fishing it like a dry or an emerger. I really would love to try and get this guy in now, because, um, yeah, he's just beautiful. He's tired, and so am I. <laughs> oh, yeah, let's do this. You know something? I am going to do my darndest to bring him to you. Here he is. Here he is. Yeah, I'm actually going to sit down, too. And reel in as much as I can. Slip in as much as I can. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm hoisting. Beautiful. Oh yeah. That pretty fish. Thank you. So I'm gonna be doing sight fishing right now for these brook trout. Um, what I'm doing is I'm, I'm throwing this jailbird and treating it like a dry fly. Actually, it's, it's an emerging gun for the blue-winged olive. And um, so the top of it is going to be sitting on the surface, but it's extremely hard to fish. You can hardly see it, especially in this low light. So what I do is I toss it out and then every once in a while, I'll just bring it up towards me so that I can see the ripple around the fly. And then I drop the line down. And I just kind of visualize where that fly is out there. Then if I see a hit, I set to the hit. And I assume that it's my fly. And so far, I've been able to pick up a couple of fish that way. And um, you know, if you can get your eye really trained to, to follow your line, keep, you know, you got to learn how to be the ball. Be the, you know, Find the fly where it lands. If you if you can't see it, then visualize where you where the end of your line is, and where that line is going beyond it, uh, the mono to the end where your fly is. And if you're having a trouble with current, just lift your rod tilt so you can see the wake behind the fly, and then drop your tip down. You'll be able to tell where your fly is again, and then follow it. Keeping your rod tip down will help you to hook up. 
uh, so that when you set, you have more area in which to set in. And uh, what's going on right now with these fish is there's a pattern to what they're doing. So we are fishing to that pattern. Um, we're not moving. Uh, so often you go toward to the fish. Well, on a river such as this, you do that, you're going to flatten the fish. They're not going to come around. But if you sit tight and let the fish come to you, you see where they're working. And what these fish are doing is like they're, they're coming towards us and they kind of circle around and go back. And they're feeding in this little area here uh, based on the stuff coming down to them. And um, so what we're going to do is let the fish come to us instead of going to them. And that way we're going to get more opportunities to catch fish. Because if you just chase fish, you're not going to catch a lot of fish because you're going to keep flattening them. So that's because there's ledge over there that the mice would fall off of. It would make more sense that they would work there. He's not a bad fish. Boy, did he take that hard. That was awesome. Look at this one right here too. Took a little see, off, see. Right? There's two of them there sipping. Eagle Lake is part of the famous Eagle River system. Eagle Lake Lodge has been there for quite a few years, and thanks to a strict catch and release policy, the fishing has remained excellent. In this watershed, there exists both huge brook trout and also northern pike. Personally, I enjoy catching northern pike as much as big brook trout. The pike are aggressive fish and very strong, especially when they use the current to their advantage. The brook trout and pike coexist in a delicate balance of predator and prey, and consequently, anglers are often not sure what they've hooked into. One day while casting for northern pike, I quickly realized how true this was. Now, I gotta tell you, what's happened here is I cast out this streamer with a sink tip or a full sinking line. I was working across the current. I had a fish on, it was a pike. And then what happened was uh, it got off. I had it sitting on the top of the water for a second there when I turned to talk to Wally. And it looks like about a three, three and a half pound brook trout has taken my fly. That is why I love fishing here in Labrador. Now the good thing is I've got a wire leader on here, which is 15 pound test, so you can really get this fish in fast or quickly. Look at that. Oh, that, that's. Unfortunately, we don't have the uh, proper landing net. Oh, look at that. That's beautiful. Here, just stay there. I'll come and I'll get the fly up quickly. Using Barbara's hook. There we go. All right. Okay, yeah, that's great. Len Rich wrote a book a few years ago that detailed a great deal about the wonderful fly fishing opportunities that exist in Labrador. He talked to me about why he wrote the book 
I've been fly fishing for about 37 years, and I've had a variety of experiences. Uh, when I worked with tourism, I toured Labrador and Newfoundland, covered a lot of ground, had a lot of fishing opportunities, and I learned quite a bit. Uh, some of these tip and tips and tactics I felt like I, I, I'd want to pass on to other people and help their enjoyment of fishing. A lot of people go go fishing, they don't really know where the fish, they just start start throwing a line and, and hoping that there's going to be a fish on the end without actually targeting where that fish is going to be lying. The fish is going to be lying somewhere where it's not under a lot of stress, where it doesn't have to swim and battle the current, where it's real easy to grab some prey as it floats by. So generally speaking, the pocket water is, is a space around or by a rock where there's some turbulence and they can just float rather effortlessly really in the current and grab these things as they come by. Obviously, outlets and inlets to a, to a pond or a lake or any, any major in, input to a river is a great spot to fish. And these are, these are places where fish are going to congregate because food is there and they're going to follow the food. And the best thing a person can do when he walks into a strange place is sit on the bank and look and watch and spend 15 or 20 minutes or even an hour watching what's going on. And these fish are going to show eventually rather than just jumping into a pool and flogging the water. A foam line is on the edge of a current. It's where fish will lie without having a, a lot of trouble battling the current, and yet they're available to catch that food in little back eddies as they form coming by. The, the food is drawn into those, and they'll just stay on the side. That's where your foam line is also. A foam line is just a spot just on the side of the current. And if you can identify a foam line, that's where food is going to be. The food gathers there, and that's where the fish are. We're fishing them in the current now, see? And the head rises up on top. And they're swimming back. Lemming! Try to flip that hook out of there without getting bit. That's Mr. Pike. Going to Labrador is definitely a dream trip for anyone that wants to catch huge brook trout in Northern Pike. We hope today's show provided you with some valuable information about this great destination and that sometime in your life you get the opportunity to visit this fly fishing paradise. To learn more about this program or about our series, please visit us on the internet at www.thenewflyfisher.com. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week. To order a copy of your favorite new fly fisher episode, Contact us through our website at www.thenewflyfisher.com or call us at 613-836-8295. Copies of this educational series make an excellent gift for your favorite angler or friend, and they also make a good addition to your reference library. $14.95 for one VHS tape plus shipping and handling. Order three tapes and only pay $39.95 plus shipping and handling.